So in the case of the Earth going around the Sun, the gravitational force is the thing that makes it go in a circle. Why? It seems very weird. Basically, it's because it's perpendicular to the velocity. Here's another example. Let's say you have a, a ball, um, and you're spinning it in a circle. Okay? Let's move in a horizontal circle. So we're going to spin an object in a horizontal circle above your head. Now, I don't actually have a ball. I couldn't find a ball this morning. What I managed to find is, uh, is an elephant. So I can't really draw an elephant, but I can write elephant. Okay? Some object, okay? So I bought one. Here's my elephant, okay? All right? So I want someone to come up. I don't know, you don't, nobody really wants to, so I'm going to just have to pick someone. So I want someone to come up. The reason I want someone to come up and do this is because I want to discuss what's going on while they're doing it. So, Deshaun, could you come up? Thanks. There you go. Thanks. So, if you could spin it, if you stand about here, okay, maybe here, and just, can you spin it above your head? Make a bigger circle. Watch your head, by the way. Okay, so as you're spinning it in the circle, you can feel it. What does it feel like? Pulling. It's pulling on you, right? So the elephant, watch your head, it looks like it's going to hit you. Because uh, it's quite hard. It's um, pulling, on your, pulling on you. What do you think the elephant feels? On it. Right. Okay, so the elephant feels you pulling on it, and that's what we call tension. Okay, thanks. So the elephant feels that Deshaun is pulling on it. I can't feel that. I can only feel it pulling on me. But that's not what's making it go in a circle. What's making it go in a circle is me pulling on it. All right? That's Newton's third law. So the elephant... So... Uh, okay, student. Feels the ball or the elephant, if you like, mass pulling on him. But Newton's third law says that the mass feels pull inwards. And this is what we call the tension. So we draw, this would be the center of the circle. The tension would be in this direction, right? The tension's pulling on the elephant, okay? But the elephant's moving in this direction, and they are perpendicular. So the elephant itself, okay, will not go in a circle unless I start it up. Once I start it up, the elephant can only continue to go in a circle if there's a tension. Once there's no tension, it doesn't work anymore. You have to have this tension to make the object move in a circle. But the velocity of the elephant, because it's being restricted by the string, okay, is caused to move in a circle. So that at any point in this, you know, elephant spinning, the elephant is traveling in that direction, but the force on it is perpendicular. That's the key to circular motion. So if we write F equals ma, we could write it as a vector. Then if we choose, the convention is that uh, direction to the center of circle is positive. Okay? So the direction to the center, that's our convention. It's just going to make things easier that we have a sign convention. The direction to the center of the circle is positive. So if we write F equals MA, we're going to end up with T equals MA. And therefore the acceleration of the elephant is in this direction. You can call that A. Okay? All right? So the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. I mean, I can draw a big circle, it might be easier, I don't know, run out of space a bit. Whenever something moves, that's, it's, it's really, 
as I say, it's, it's not in, intuitive, but whenever something moves in a circle, the acceleration, first of all, you know the acceleration has to be in the same direction as the force, Newton's, Newton's second law. You know that the only force on the elephant in a horizontal circle in this plane is the tension. So we write F equals MA, T equals MA. These have to be in the same direction, so the acceleration must be towards the center of the circle. Okay. So, you could say, in this case, the tension is the force that makes the object move in a circle. Circle. And the tension is perpendicular to the velocity. I put these vector signs because they have a direction, okay? And that means perpendicular. Okay, so, uh, all right. Okay, so in a little bit of math, because I need to quantify this. Okay, so, here's our object moving in a circle. M, velocity V, the acceleration is in this direction, okay? Just moving in a circle, some mass. We need an equation for A, okay? So the motion is in a circle of radius r uh, and velocity V. So to find out what the acceleration is, what we're going to do is we're going to do something similar to the way that we did drag. We know what the units are of acceleration. We know what the units are for radius. And we know what the units are for velocity. So we use something called dimensional analysis to figure out the relationship between A, R, and V. Okay? And this is done in the following way. So, let's just look at the units, okay? So A, just looking at the units. A, what are the units of acceleration? Right, meters per second squared, right? What about the units of radius? A length, right. And the units of velocity? Right. So we need to do, we need to find the relationship between A, R, and V such that the units match. Okay? So the way that we do that is we write the following. We write A equals V to the power X times by R to the power Y. And we need to figure out what X and Y are. Okay? This is a standard technique in mathematics or physics. We know what the units of this is. This, we know the units of this, and we know the units of this. So all we do is we put the units of A here, units of V, and units of R, and we solve the equation for X and Y. So what we're solving is for the powers. Okay? So we have meters over seconds squared equals meters over seconds to the power X times by meters to the power Y. Okay? Everybody with me? And then we solve for x and y. So you equate the powers, okay? So we match powers. Match the powers. So if we were to match the powers, the power of the powers of meters, we have what's the power here? Is a one, okay? So can you see that we have 1 equals x plus y? Does that make sense? Sometimes people, if they haven't done this for a while. So 1 is equal to x plus y because 
the x is the power here on the m, and y is also the power on the m. So we have 1 equals x plus y. And the other equation says minus 2, because this s is on the denominator. Minus 2 equals what? Anybody? Some, anybody? Someone else? Plus y. That's close. That's close. A negative x, yeah. Negative x. Um, there's a seat up here. Why is it negative x? Because the s is on the bottom here. So we have minus 2 is negative x. So that tells me the value of x and y. OK, so we have, this tells me that x equals 2. And the first equation says that 1 plus 1 equals 2 plus y, which tells me that y equals minus 1. Right? And that gives me the equation for a, which tells me that a equals v squared over r. You see, we're going to. We're going to use this a lot in homeworks, in exams, because this is kind of, this is the key result for circular motion. It's that the acceleration is equal to the velocity squared over r. And you can find that using this mathematical uh, technique. This is called dimensional analysis. It's called matching the units, OK? And it's really useful, OK?